Hey guys, I'm Randy. And I'm Daniel. We're two lifelong friends and musicians, but when we're not playing gigs, we like to talk games. And today on the Gaming Gig Podcast, there ain't no party like a Switch party because a Switch party won't stop. And should Souls-like games have adjustable difficulty? Well, guys, welcome to the Gaming Gig Podcast. Uh, This is a viewer-driven podcast. We're fueled by you. Basically, what we do is we take... We put polls on the main Gaming Gig channel. We look at comments from those. We read and react to them. Mm -hmm. We bottle them up. We distill them down into a carbonated beverage, and that's what fuels us. Exactly like that. So today's main topic is going to be about Souls-like games and should they have adjustable difficulty. That's a very interesting conversation that we're going to get to have. But first... We're going to talk about Nintendo. They just won't let the Switch die, will they? They won't. That that thing, it just, you think it's gone. You think it's given all it can give. And then from the ashes, from from the, the bottom of a pit of a seven-year-old console, bangers emerge. Yeah. We are in, not only seven, we are in the eighth year of the console, working on it towards year eight. Wild. And still, Nintendo just put out a Direct. Of course, they put it out on Tuesday. We put mm-hmm. this podcast out on Monday, so that means it's been almost a week. But still, uh, thank you, Nintendo, for that, by the way. Yeah, you, you suck. You couldn't just get it a couple days early? I think they did. I think the, the Nintendo Ninjas did that on purpose to try to keep uh, our up-and-coming podcast down. They do that. They always do. I'm trying no, to it's keep it's the always trying down. to keep the little man down. Mm-hmm. But um, still, this was, a, in my opinion, a really great Direct with lots of big name games and we are so far into the switch's life that it feels just a little strange and it feels a little unusual because most consoles at this point in their life are not getting these types of games it almost feels like we're being greedy like we're being greedy. like we're being greedy we're just we're getting too much you know we're we're gonna mm-hmm. we're um we're gonna expect this from here on out nintendo i mean year eight of the switch two you better be dropping metroid prime four and a half it's sure. I'll tell you, year eight of the Wii U wasn't nearly anything compared to year eight of the Switch. Did, um, would the, did the Wii U last for eight years before the Switch came in? No. I no, didn't think so. No, no, no. The Wii U lasted like four Lord, years what before a, the Switch came what in. What a drought that would have been. <laughs> yeah, right? Jesus. Um, but so we put out a poll asking what people thought about the Nintendo Direct and give it a letter grade. Hit us those results, Daniel. Letter grade? A letter grade. I barely know her grade. Anyway... Uh, 36% of people gave the Nintendo Direct an A, 47% gave it a B, 9% gave it a C, and 9% gave it an F. So overwhelmingly, the majority gave it a B or an A, uh, with B, you know, kind of coming out on top, which I think is to be expected. Yeah, I don't think you you pulled the comment that someone said, like, you guys are going to give the Xbox Showcase an A, which Xbox Showcase was great, by the mm-hmm. way. It was. But it got an A, if you look at the polls. Yeah, uh, and they're like, "You're gonna give this direct a B? Like, what's going on here?" Uh, yeah, personally, I, this was an A direct for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this was an A direct for me too. After a little bit of further introspection, my initial gut reaction was a B. Oh, okay, and I don't really know. I mean, I think probably it's because I am just so excited about the Switch too, and I'm just kind of like, I'm just ready, you know? Yeah, and so it was just hard for me to like just give myself over to like initial hype, you know, Mm -hmm. but, um, upon further inspection, uh, I I have also decided that this is an a, uh, it was way too good than it had any business being. Yeah, absolutely. hundred percent agree. Let's read some comments here about what people thought. We have one from bam, bam, Martin who Mm -hmm. said new Mario, new Zelda and new Metroid high quality. And that's kind of what got me. Like it's the just, trifecta. It, exactly. <laughs> I just started thinking about it, and I was like, well, we got Mario and Luigi. We got Zelda. And we got finally got something on Metroid Prime 4. How can I not give that an A? That's what we've been wanting. Mm-hmm. You know? So, yeah, I'm with you, Bam Bam. Yeah. I mean, like, for me, the biggest game announced was the Zelda game. You mm-hmm. know, the fact that we're getting a new Zelda is crazy. A new 2D Zelda. We haven't had a new a new 2D Zelda since um, Link Between Worlds mm-hmm. on the 3DS. So it's probably been close to a decade at this point. Actually, I think Link Between Worlds may have been one of the later 3DS games. But still, it's been quite a while. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's been, it is not like we just got one. Right. And this is the first true Legend of Zelda. <laughs> That's game. true. Yeah. You know, because you finally play Zelda. You know, our friend Frankie sent me a meme. Yeah, he sent it, it to me too. Oh, he sent it to you too? <laughs> yeah. 
and it was complaining about how now uh how now zelda is a girl <laughs> and, and i thought that was so funny and i sent him back and i was like the next thing you know they're gonna start making metroid a girl <laughs> like people just get mad about everything these days but uh i think changing it over to zelda is is cool because it's it we don't know what that's gonna play like you know they could do anything they wanted with that game so yeah it's kind of a reason to shake up the legend of zelda format which they've already done quite a bit you know breath of the wild tears of the kingdom those are games that definitely defied the convention set forth by zelda games you know we don't have the traditional dungeon new item structure like all the other games do Mm -hmm. and it seems as if that mindset has continued now in the 2d zelda which i do think is kind of turning off some people, not because they're mad that you're playing a Zelda, but the fact that this mm-hmm. doesn't look like it's going to be back to that old format of you go to the dungeon, you get this new weapon or item that helps you progress, and then you finish it, and then you go to the, and it brings you to new areas, you know, like that sort right. of thing. Well, you know, Mr. Zelda did say that the new format was better. Yeah. So I guess that she is did. bleeding over into 2D Zelda. Yeah, and it seems like... Specifically, you know, you notice when we're looking at the gameplay for this uh, Echoes of Wisdom, mm-hmm. there's, you know, that thing across the screen where it has all the different items when you pull up, when you basically use your, I think it's called the Tri-Rod. Um, when you use that, it brings up all the things that you are able to duplicate or create echoes of. Mm-hmm. And that looks exactly like what we saw back in um, like Tears of the Kingdom when you're mm-hmm. attaching things uh like items together or you're attaching things to your bow like or arrows you know it looked very similar to me and I, th- I had to think like surely this game is very influenced by the creativity and the kind of like just create your own solutions that they've you know really in breath of the wild but especially mm-hmm. in tears of the kingdom 100 percent. and how and how could you put out a game that's a, such a banger as tears of the kingdom and it not kind of influence where you're going in right. your franchise like i i totally see that and i'm all about it so since we're already talking about Zelda, let's go ahead and read the comment that okay, I pulled sure. for, for Legend Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. This is from Larry House, longtime friend of the podcast, mm-hmm. Thank who you, said, Larry. I wasn't really sure at first about playing as Zelda, but the game actually caught me by surprise. It looks like it totally reinvents the series with some fresh new ideas. And, and that's kind of what we've been getting at. I mean, yeah. changing it over to Zelda is an excuse to shake the format up, and they're going to do it. But at the same time, I also get, like, if you're one of those people who is like, I kind of disappointed by this because I really enjoyed the old Zelda <clears throat> format and the old, you know, gameplay loop. And we're, it doesn't seem like we're going to get that with this. Um, and you might be worried that that format is dead. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm also worried about that. I think that there's a chance that it <laughs> yeah, is dead. I do too. Uh, we might see it come back in the form of remakes. Like we just saw, you know, um, mm-hmm. Link's Awakening a few years back. Um, at least it feels like a few years back, but I actually found out that that game came out in 2019, which is five years ago. Well, wow. um, so that obviously had the original formula. But mm-hmm. That was also a little bit of a strange game, but that um, was a super weird. That's like the weirdest one. It's like the weirdest one. Yeah. Yeah. It's got some, it's a strange game, but still it does overall fall the old format. But yeah, I'm also worried that it's dead mm-hmm. and I don't know. We don't get to make Nintendo no. it, in my mind. We would have things like the 2D games would follow the old formula, mm-hmm. and the 3D games would maybe follow the new Breath of the Wild Tears of the Kingdom formula, and maybe there's room for spinoffs. Like, maybe this Zelda thing introduces a new gameplay loop that works for Zel- actually like Zelda Zelda games. Right. Well, I mean, the next logical progression would be for there to be a game where you play as both. Ooh, co-op. I mean, that that the writing's on the wall, right? Nintendo, like get next. Okay, the next game. Say, I wasn't even necessarily saying co-op. I just meant like there'd be different sections where you had to play as both. Uh, yeah, that would also be cool. Yeah. Either way, really. But the next 3D Zelda game, the one after Tears of the Kingdom, make it so that you can play as both Link and Zelda. That would be so cool. That would be very cool. That's a good cool. idea. Yeah. Well, I occasionally love, I have those. I would love that. Yeah. So we also got some other big things. Uh, Nintendo was just pumping them out. A new a I, new IPs just galore. Not new IPs, sorry. New games in established IPs. Mm-hmm. The one Sequel looking, City, baby. Sequel City, right? The I think one of the bigger ones was Mario and Luigi, this game called Brothership. Yeah, I think that is... Uh, first of all, I think that's a funny title. Uh, Brothership, obviously, is a play off the word Mothership. Mm-hmm. And they're brothers. And I think that is just... Freaking adorable. And it seems like they're going to be doing some sailing around. Yeah. Uh, seeing in the trailer, there's this really weird 
it doesn't look like a boat per se, but they're in, in the ocean. But then on the cover, mm -hmm. there is a boat. So I don't know. There's definitely some boat things. Is it going to be just a boat though? Or are we going like airship style? You know, I mean, you know, Japanese games they love, love their, airships. their airships. They love their airships. That is something that I have learned. Yeah. Um, but we got a comment here uh, on Mario and Luigi Brothership from Rainball. Randy, hit us with Rainball. Rainball says, I unironically thought the Mario and Luigi subseries died with Alpha Dream, so the direct opening on something I lost hope on was incredible. Yeah. I don't think you're the only person who reacted that way. I no. mean, it was clearly a choice to start the direct with that. And it absolutely, and what's even crazier, in my opinion, is that this game didn't leak. At least I didn't hear about it, and I feel like I hear about all kinds of leaks. Yeah. And this was one of the only things that hadn't leaked. There was rumors. I guess the Zelda game didn't entirely leak either. There were rumors that there might be a game where you play as Zelda. But yeah. I felt like that was more spurred on by the fact that we got a game where you play as Peach. And people were like, wouldn't it be cool if there was a game where you play as Zelda? Right. Um, but I had heard not a like drop of rumor about this Mario and Luigi game. Right. That would take PP's Showtime and turn it into PZ's Showtime. Exactly. PZ show. PZ Princess Zelda. <clears throat> oh, PP show. Not my best joke. I will not your best not joke, my, but not, my best joke. not your best joke. But you know what? It probably made someone. Maybe it made Heck laugh. Heck, if you're watching this podcast, I'm sure you enjoyed that joke. I, Heck loves a good PP show time. I, and I do too. And that's <laughs> and I felt like this may be one of our last opportunities to make one. And that's why I just really wanted to get one out there. PP show time jokes will never ever go away. When you name a game Princess Peach Showtime, not realizing that it can be abbreviated to PP Showtime, yeah, that's that is. You think that's got some that's legs comedy to it. gold? Yeah. yeah, it is comedy gold. That's never going away. I ever, agree. Ever. All right, you got anything else about Mario and Luigi? Or are you ready to move? Oh, on? Uh, besides the fact that it just looks good. I mean, it <laughs> looked really good. It does look good. I love the animation we've seen where Mario like co cocks his hammer back, you know, and then Luigi hits yeah. it. And that's such a staple of those games, yeah. you know, from what I've heard is like the. The kind of tag team like cooperative uh, yep, yep. element of the combat, and I think I think this combat will be really fun. I I've never played a Mario and Luigi game. I've played some of the Paper Mario games, you know, in terms of the Mario RPGs. But I know Mario and Luigi. It kind of I know it's very similar in some ways, mm -hmm. but I know it has its own thing as well. Um, I'm excited about this one. I, it makes me want to go back and play some of the other Mario yeah. and Luigi games. I've wanted to like. do that for a long time. I just never have. So you also never played any of them? No, oh, okay. no, never have. Um, so obviously, I mean, moving on to other big things, the biggest big thing that was revealed for most people mm -hmm. is going to be uh, we got the first real trailer for Metroid Prime 4, the game that, you know, seemed like it was never going to come out. Yeah, uh, that's pretty nuts because, you know, that game is literally like 400 years in the making. It's been canceled like 17 times. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and here we are finally getting an actual look at it and we even got a subtitle. Yeah. Beyond. Beyond. Yeah. And I mean, cue the toy story jokes, right? Did you see that someone put together like a little, uh, little meme and it was like, it was, it said Metroid prime Two bed, Metroid prime three bath, Metroid prime four beyond. I love it. Cause then it's bed, bath and beyond. Right. But the. Why did it have to start with two? Like, I don't know because I maybe it started with one. I just remember saying Bed Bath and Beyond. I'm, why couldn't it have been Metroid Prime One Bed, Metroid Prime Two Bath, Metroid Prime Three, and Metroid Prime Four Beyond? Maybe that's what it said. Maybe that's what it was. I just don't remember. I just look. I saw it. My brain is already filled with all kinds of stuff. I was scrolling. I think Twitter and saw it. And mm, I thought it was funny. You were death scrolling, but I didn't. I didn't examine it that closely. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, buddy. But yeah, we did get some looks at Met or a look at Metroid Prime 4 Beyond, and we've got some comments. So, uh, totally not Ed did say, I think this is not Ed. This is not Ed. Totally this is not Ed. Yeah. Uh, who said, I think Metroid Prime 4 will have a way to play in VR because it's literally a headset in game, not for Switch, but for the next console. I pulled this comment specifically. Because I wanted to hear what you thought about it. Okay, you guys, if, if if you're new around here or if you just don't know my crazy like conspiracy theories, yeah, I think that there is a non-zero chance mm -hmm. that whatever's the the new Switch that's coming out is going to be essentially a sequel to the Switch, which basically looks like exactly the same, except they're going to create a larger emphasis on the ability for it to be docked into a headset and used as a VR system. 
We've seen it already done with Labo, mm-hmm. but I think they're going to lean into it. And I think that's going to be the new way you can switch, you know, you can switch right. <laughs> into a new, a new format, a new gameplay mode. So I think there's a, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but mm-hmm. I think there's a chance. So this, of course, makes total sense to me. What Think about how cool it would be. You have Metroid Very Prime cool. 4 come out on Switch, but on Switch 2, it has the option to mm-hmm. play the entire game in VR. That that would be so cool. That is very cool. I I just don't care because VR just ain't my thing. But um, and that's the thing you don't have to. You can just play it normally either yeah. way. But I, I mean, I, I guess as a non VR shill, hmm. <laughs> my, you can't shill for a concept, Daniel. <clears throat> clearly, you can. <laughs> um, my. My opinion would be I wish they would have put in their their creativity and their resources into another, you know, gimmick because that one just ain't going to do it for me because it makes me super motion sick. Do I think it's really cool? Yes. And I and I think yeah. it fits Metroid Prime really well. So, I thought this was a good comment for those reasons. That being said, I that would not get me excited. Well, I think you're in luck cuz I really don't think it's going to happen, but I think there's a chance. Mm-hmm. Like you never know, right? Okay. So what else are we talking about Metroid Prime 4? Well, the big question everyone has is, will this be a cross-gen game? We know it's launching in 2025. Mm -hmm. All the rumors and news we know is that also Switch 2 or whatever they're going to end up calling it. Mm -hmm. People hate it when you call it Switch 2, by the way. A lot of people do. People hate everything. People hate everything you say on the internet. Look, guys, it's the it's the next console. As far as we know, it's going to be a like direct successor. It's going to be like the same concept. Why not? We, why can't we call it the Switch Two until we know what it's called? I will. I will be the voice of the people here, okay. and I will constantly refer to it for the rest of forever, and t- even after it's named as the successor to the Nintendo Switch. Yes, Entertainment it- Switch. Yeah, don't 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 ever call it Switch Two. But anyways, the question is: Will Metroid Prime Four launch as a cross-gen title, sort of the way that Breath of the Wild did with the Wii U to the Nintendo Switch? Yeah, I think there's a good chance of that. Um, they've already done that and had good success with something like Breath of the Wild, so mm-hmm. why not lean into it? Do it again with a highly anticipated title, you know? Yes. Obviously, this isn't as highly anticipated as something like Breath of the Wild was. No. Um, Metroid Prime. It's almost like at this point the Metroid Prime series, it's it's kind of entered a mythical status. Not because of how many people love and play the games, although people definitely do. Mm-hmm. It's more based on the fact that we've had this long development. It was brought up. It was canceled. We've not seen a thing about it, so it kind of has this mystery about it. What no one was sure when it was going to be revealed. It could be revealed at any moment for the past five years, right. and we haven't seen it. So, like, I think that's one of the reasons that it has got... It's almost like it's more infamous than famous. True, true. And Metroid as a whole, you know, it's... People always like to say, like, Metroid is not the, you know, the the mover of numbers that something like a Zelda or a Mario is. It's definitely not. It's not. And I'll tell you why it's not. Okay. It's because we have accepted that it will not be. <laughs> oh, that's okay. It. It's because us as gamers are like, look... This is B tier Nintendo, and it will always be B tier Nintendo. Exactly, <laughs> that's exactly what I'm trying to say. And Nintendo feeds into this. They've also decided this is B tier Nintendo. Nintendo, listen to me. You put out Metroid Dread. It's one of the best Metroidvanias ever. It's it's one of my favorite Switch games. Mm-hmm. It's so damn good. Mm-hmm. Stop relegating Metroid to to freaking B tier like last string status. And put Metroid in the starting lineup, okay? Metroid can crawl now. You know what I'm saying? Like, Metroid can crawl. And Metroid, like, I don't even care. If you want to put out a game and you make Metroid a girl. Like, I don't care if Metroid's a girl in Metroid Prime 4. I think it would be freaking amazing. (laughs) And (laughs) and for those reasons, I think it would be a great cross-gen title. (laughs) I, I, I'm really. I wish you had gotten through that without laughing at yourself. It's because he, it's because you started laughing. But I well, I, I'm allowed to laugh at your ridiculousness. <clears throat> but you're not allowed. If you're going to go on one of those rants, you have to commit, man. I did. I tried really hard, and I made it through most of it. All right. Let's see what some commenters say about this fact. Will Metroid Prime Four be a crossing game? Okay. Uh, hit us with Steve Davies here. Steve Davies said it will likely either run slightly smoother or higher res on the successor to the Nintendo Switch via backwards compatibility. 
or there will be a separate version with better 3D models, textures, and effects. But if there are two versions, I doubt you will get both with a single purchase. Mm. Had to edit the comment just a little bit there to stay true to the, you know, You're never going to say, yeah, exactly. What do you think? What do you think they're going to do? Out of these two options, what do you think they're more likely to do? Um, I think it makes a lot of sense that it would just run better on Switch 2 via mm-hmm. some sort of... Damn it! Damn it! <laughs> you already ruined it. I think there's a good chance that it might run slightly better <clears throat> on the successor to the Nintendo Switch uh, via some the Nintendo Magic. Right. You know? um, I don't really think there'll be two versions. Like, I don't really think you're going to go buy like a Switch version <laughs> and a successor to the Nintendo Switch version. Yeah. Um, and I, but I do agree that if there were two versions, you definitely wouldn't get them both at once. Oh, with one no, no, no. I don't think you're going to get either... I don't think you're getting both of them no matter what. I don't think you're getting just one copy of the game with one purchase, to be honest with you. Oh, you think it's I, like multiple purchases? I think they're going to make you pay in installments. It's going to be layaway. Or layaway a subscription. Only. Layaway only. Oh, or a subscription. you mm-hmm. got to subscribe to the Nintendo successor to the Nintendo Switch. Yeah. It's a, a, it's a pure, like, only subscription-based console. You can't even buy games for it. Right. And why would you want that? Yeah, why would when you? you can... You know, pay a one-time, convenient, recurring, never cancelable fee. Never cancelable, cancel, cancelable, cancelable. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, there are all kinds of craziness. Nintendo really. This was, I thought, a banger. What other games from this direct like stood out to you as like you ones you want to talk about? I know there's Donkey Kong. Yeah. So the Don- I did want to touch on that briefly. Donkey Kong Country Returns. Fine. You got my money, okay? I'll buy the damn game. It's about time. You've never played it. Now I'm, they're like, they've been trying. They're like, look, we put it on the Wii, you didn't play it. Right. We put it on the 3DS, you still didn't play it. Right. We're going to put it on the Switch, and you're finally going to buy this game. And that's, that is going to be the truth. <laughs> okay. that, that's going to happen. Um, and I've never played it. And for those reasons, I'm trying to reframe it as like, you know what? This is a new game for you. Yeah. Just be happy about it. Mm-hmm. And it's a good game, apparently. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and I love Tropical Freeze, and this is kind of the, you know this the ancestor of Tropical Freeze. It's mm-hmm. it's from the same studio, I'm pretty sure. Um, so cool. I don't know that <clears> it is from the same studio. I think it's the same people. I uh, I thought that Retro did Tropical Freeze. I don't know. Um, let's find out. Um, what do you think about this? Because I, well, I never really finished. So I. I am happy that Donkey Kong is finally getting a release. I'm bummed that it's not a new game. That's kind of what I was getting to. But while yeah. I'm doing some research, go ahead and well, take it away. Well, uh, unlike you, I have purchased a copy of Donkey Kong Country Returns for the 3DS. I, I got it the second time. Uh, I never played it, though. So I have not played this game. So it is also a new game to me, even though I own a copy. Mm. Um, Donkey Kong Country Returns is retro. Okay. So what, who, who did Tropical Freeze? Are they both retro? And, you know, that's the thing. That's the reason we're not getting any Donkey Kong is because they got retro tied up doing other things. It is. They're, they're the same. They're both retro. They're both okay. retro. Okay. Eat shit, Cody. I had, I had it in my head that Donkey Kong Country Returns was not retro, but I should have known it. Of course it was retro. Yeah. And, and Tropical Freeze is a banger. So, yeah. like, this is probably awesome. Um, People say it is. People say it's yeah. a great game. And, I, and I'm happy that he's finally going to be on the Switch. I just... Well, he's been on the Switch already, but... Oh, you mean this game is going to be on the Switch? This game is... Yeah, I mean, I guess you're right. Tropical Freeze was already on Switch, so... Right. Yeah. Donkey Kong's been there, but... Why did Donkey Kong get... Ign- why is Donkey... Why? Uh, I think... <laughs> eight years. In no my mind, Donkey I think Kong that they, they think that Donkey Kong, like, it's going to be Retro that mm-hmm. does it, and Retro's been tied up with uh, Metroid Prime 4 right. and Metroid Prime Remastered, um, so they've, they've got this... I don't know that maybe they just can't handle working also on a Donkey Kong game. And I don't yeah. think that this Donkey Kong Country Returns, I initially heard that it was retro that did it like they did remastered. Mm-hmm. I don't think it is. I think that they had a third party um, company come in and do this Donkey Kong Country Returns. Like the Switch re- port? Yeah, the Switch mm-hmm. port. Maybe you're right. I think it's the same people who did, I can't remember, but I think it's a third party. Okay. So, um, hey, it just is what it is. It uh, is. So you're you're, bl- you're saying it's Metroid's fault that we didn't get any new Donkey Kong. Yeah. Yep. They were too busy with the Metroid Prime 4, I think. I don't know. I mean, I'm just guessing. Yeah, I know. All right. Well, yeah, we got some new Donkey Kong stuff. Uh, I think the Dragon Quest 1 through 3 HD 2D remakes look really good. And I'll, I'll probably pick up 3 when it comes out because I want to play a Dragon Quest game. This might be the one because the new ones are long and 
long. I think these are also long. Aren't yeah, they? but but these like old school retro JRPGs, I feel mm-hmm. like I can kind of sink my teeth into a little easier than these new ones. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I would know. I tend to avoid those type of games. Yeah. So I'm gonna try Dragon Quest three when it comes out. I think it looks really good. I mean, it looks like, like they all the HD two yeah. games. They look like exact, you could literally put them all up next to each other, and you would have a hard time telling which game's which. But that's kind of another topic, wow. isn't it? That was. I mean, they look why good. Are you throwing shade. They look that? good. Wow, they look good. But you cannot tell me that they don't all look the same. Test, you just can't. test me. Test me. Okay, well, I bet I can do it. Yeah, can't look at the character models. Well, what am I looking at? In the backgrounds? backgrounds. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can't do that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You can tell which characters are what, but if you can't look at the character, I'm just saying like, besides- We play Guess the Game once a week. We can't do that with non-HD 2D, 2D remake games. Like how- Yeah, but you that's know- That's not fair. Yeah, it is. It is fair. And you guys know what I'm talking about. They look beautiful, but they all look the same. Next, Super Mario Party Jamboree. Another new game in an established franchise. Of course, we're getting a third Mario Party. But this one's kind of exciting <clears throat> because it's- the second, only the second Mar- new Mario Party, because that one that was a Mario Party Superstars, mm-hmm. that was just kind of a rehash of old stuff. This yeah. is the second new one. Yeah. Um, Jamboree. Cool. I mean, I don't care. Yeah, I mean, I know Mario you don't Party. like you don't like Mario Party. You don't like that it's got too much RNG. It's got it. It's too random. You can't. You're com- you you love to be competitive. You can't just have fun with a video game. And uh, mm-hmm. that's where you're at. <laughs> yeah. I just know that I played the new, not not the old one, uh, the one that brought back the N64 ones. Super but, Mario Party. Okay. That's the, the one that didn't do that? The That was the first one. Super Mario okay. Party was the first new like, Okay. Well, Mario I played Party. that one at your house with you and Catherine. Yep. And we got to the end, and it was handing out stars. And it started handing out stars for, like, Biggest Loser. <laughs> it started handing out stars for, like... Um, you know, coolest pair of shoes. Like it started handing out stars for um, most likely to succeed. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and I was like, this is a bunch of bullshit. Like I, I, I was good at the mini games. Why I not win? <laughs> you know, and I didn't. I didn't win, and I didn't play it again. <laughs> um, so I mean, I'm kind of playing it up a little bit, but um, that really is how I feel about it. Yeah, I know. I know you can't just enjoy the. They're fun games, man. So, but see, you listen now. They are fun. Randy likes to throw shade, saying like, "You can't just enjoy a game for the fun of it." But then he turns around and does the same thing. It's like, it's like, oh, people getting their ass kicked by the first boss in the new Elden Ring DLC. Sure sounds fun, you know. And you kind of like talk out both sides of your mouth on it. Like, I pick a damn side. I made a joke about that the other day to you. And it was and just. I made that joke in confidence. It was in confidence. And here you are. <laughs> that was just a joke. And I didn't say it just sounds fun. I made a, a, a graphic joke that was. And I didn't share that with you the didn't. internet, did I? Yeah, but it made it seem like I wasn't joking, like I was just dogging on it, which I wasn't. I was just making a funny joke. Okay. All right, Dave. And we're going to get to that. Yeah, speaking of, that's going to be our whole next thing. Yeah, but and and there is a little more to this Nintendo Direct. We're going to go through it maybe kind of quick, hit on anything we want anything, to. Anything, yeah, anything else. I mean, we, we've hit the big, big things. Was there anything else that you were like also stood out to you as being cool? Like you're like, I'm excited about that in terms of Nintendo. Stuff. The, um, the Marvel versus Capcom fighting collection is good. And, I, and it's cool for, uh, you know, simply the reason that the Marvel versus Capcom games, specifically two, I think is the big one people are so excited about. That game has not been purchasable mm-hmm. for a really, really, really long time. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure. Um, so it's kind of been relegated to Fightcade if you wanted to play that game, especially if you wanted to play it multiplayer. You, you pretty much have to play it on Fightcade. This is supposed to bring in multiplayer, and I think it's even getting like some more sophisticated, like modern day rollback netcode. So yes, I heard about that. I it, heard about the the netcode. The like apparently that's going to make the you know all these going to be playable online and it's going to be a great con- hopefully a great connection. Yeah, and it's not just coming to Switch; it's coming everywhere. Mm-hmm. So okay, you know yeah. you can get it on your PC and hook up your fight stick or whatever you want to mm-hmm. do. But that's a win for fighting game fans, and it uh, is just another drop in the bucket of what's been really great for fighting game fans lately. Yeah, I, I'm not a fighting game person, but I did hear that the <coughs> fighting game community was very happy with this. They are. Yeah. They are psyched. 
There's I think they would have all went out and bought Switches if it was a Switch exclusive. They probably would have. And I doubt many of them have Switches. Mm. Um, Funko Fusion looked like shit. Yeah, it did. <laughs> I mean, the game could be fun, but graphically, that game looked horrible. Yeah, I know. Funko Fusion. I think it's a subtitle. Funko Fusion looks like shit. Yeah, that, it pretty much did. Stray also did not look good. Uh, not... It just like didn't look like a good. It didn't look like a very well optimized port. It did um, not. I know that a game like Stray, which is very graphically intensive and is a beautiful game, it's gonna be hard to get that thing to look good on Switch. Um, I just don't know that they did the best they could do. I don't think they did. Uh, it looked a little rough around the edges <laughs> looked, of these character models. Uh, it looked pretty bad, and like, and you know, like, I think you can. It's tough when you're when you're talking about building a game. Like with the Switch in mind, you can go with some really beautiful stuff. I mean, Metroid Prime Remastered and Metroid Prime 4, from what I've seen in the trailer, mm -hmm. are great examples of you can make a game that is, you know, like if you focus on the hardware and you know what its limits are and you don't try to go past them and then dial it back, you can make a really good looking game. Mm -hmm. Some like Stray obviously was not built with the Nintendo Switch in mind and no. it shows. Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. You know, in addition to that, we got Nintendo World Championships NES Edition. Oh, yeah. I know you said you didn't think that that was a game for you. I think it is a game for me mm -hmm. because it's it seems to be all about, like, little challenges and speed runs and things like that of these old retro games. Yeah. And that's how I like to play them anyway. So I'll probably pick this up and check it out. I think I think it sounds cool. Yeah. Um, it, I'm, I'm, I know it's a game for some people. I, I might. To me, that seems like a game that I will rent. Mm-hmm. And then probably return it and not be interested in playing it anymore. Right. You know, try it. I want to see what it's like. But um, I think that's pretty much it, man. Um, are you ready to move on to... Actually, no. We're not done. I thought we were done. Mm. But we got to find out because we put out a poll Randy asking... getting ahead of himself. I just didn't see it on that one. We put out a poll um, asking which games people were most excited to play. And these results were really interesting. Hit us with those. Yeah, at 8%, people said uh, something besides all these big titles. You know, I don't care about any of these big announcements. Uh, and that's all well and good. Moving on to the good stuff. At 38%, people said Metroid Prime 4 Beyond. 23% uh, people said Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. And 31% people said Mario and Luigi Brothership. I was really surprised that Mario and Luigi beat out the Zelda game. Me I was too. like, what? I, I know that like people like Mario and Luigi, but I thought more than Zelda? Yeah, I thought that was weird. More too. than Zelda? I thought that was weird. I thought it was weird that Zelda didn't come out on top, if I'm being honest. Mm. But I'm I mean, I guess it makes sense that Metroid Prime Like it's myth as like I said, it's like it's almost mythical now. Yeah. It's like reached that like, oh my god, it's finally happening. You know You know what makes me sad about all that is that this game it, it'll probably be really good. Tom you know? Prime Four? Yeah. Okay. Like I trust that retro will make a really fun game. Mm -hmm. It won't be good enough to live up to the hype. No. Because it can't be. It just can't. No matter what, it can't. And and that is its problem. Mm -hmm. Is like it has it <clears throat> it's stayed so much in the conversation. It's the same thing is gonna happen to Hollow Knight Silk Song. The same exact oh, yeah. thing is gonna happen. Oh that game's never coming out though. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about that. I mean like it's, it's, but it exactly, I mean, like it's been every single Nintendo Direct, every one mm -hmm. for the past many years, people have been just begging to see something from Metroid Prime 4. And now we finally have it. I think one, the initial reaction is kind of, it's kind of hard not to be disappointed once you actually see the game because now yeah. it's a real thing. It's not just this like thing in your head. You know what I, I mean? was actually kind of, kind of let down by what we got just because it just looked like another Metroid Prime game. Yeah, I think on I don't the, know what when I we, we were streaming it, and uh, I think I said, well, Dana, what did you expect it to look like? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. I just don't. I don't know. I need, I wanted to see something really, really special, you know, and I just. You saw I, Metroid I just Prime. saw Metroid Prime. Right. So, and I'm not trying to shit on the game. Like, I, I'll buy it. But uh, I think I was just, you know, I was kind of played by my own lofty expectations that can't be met. And I'm afraid that's going to happen. I'm sure you were not the only one. No, I don't think I was. I, I feel like this was pretty much exactly what I expected. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I don't know. I was way more personally, like, super pumped. I was just still, like, reeling about the fact that we're getting a new 2D Zelda game. Like, that made me so happy mm -hmm. that I had a hard time even, you know, like, that hype was so high. I was just coming down. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I'm excited about Metroid Prime 4. I love Metroid. Me too. Um, I'm, you know, not... 
I haven't played all the Metroid Prime games. No, I, I played either. I played the first one and that's it. Yeah. So it's like I'm not as invested in Metroid Prime as a series as I am. Like if they had announced a 2D Metroid. Mm. Mm, oh. Baby girl. Oh. You talk about I'd have been pumped. Yeah. I would have been so pumped. Shoot. And, on. you know, Retro would like to announce that they've also put out a badass direct sequel to Metroid Dread. I would have <laughs> shit. <laughs> right? I mean, I, that's where I would have been. But so, what was your? What were you most hyped about? I know for me, it was Zelda. I think Zelda. I think Zelda. But uh, you know, I am excited about Metroid, and I am excited about Mario and Luigi. So, I think Zelda, though. Yeah, man. But it's I don't think it. it's an overwhelming uh, margin for me. Oh, oh, for me, it was. It was. I mean, I'm excited about the others, but it's not even close yeah. to Zelda. I mean, Zelda as a franchise is one of my most dear and loved. You know gaming franchises of all time if mm-hmm. not my number one yeah so like a new 2d zelda game is just like super exciting i love that we're getting to play as as zelda i'm so there have been games where you could play as zelda mm-hmm. there um i think like immediately one that comes to mind is the um what what it is the warrior hyrule warriors age of calamity yeah you could play as zelda yeah okay so it's not like i've never played as zelda before but i it's exciting it's just cool yeah it is yeah, you, you popped off for that. And, uh, you know, there there's a moment in an upcoming Nintendo Direct in which I pop off. But uh, it's when they announced the new Smash game. Oh, you will pop. <laughs> you will pop off for sure. All right. Let's move on to our next uh, conversation. But first. But first. Yeah. We um, need to go back oh, and tell the back. people about our Twitch. <laughs> so Randy's been. Uh, y'all can't see behind the scenes like I can. But Randy has been playing this outline fast and loose, guys. <laughs> so we are going back to uh, an earlier note that I had in the outline. And I'm going to tell you guys about our Twitch. So um, we stream on Twitch every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, uh, Sunday, and some Fridays Most and Saturdays. Most days. Most days, but some Fridays and Saturdays and basically no Wednesdays. So uh, we do that at 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, come hang out. It's a great place, and we'd love to see you in the chat. And also a place we'd love to see you is our Discord channel. So just I said Discord channel again. I mean Discord server, guys. I cannot get it right. Just you're gonna have to forgive me. I can't, I don't know. I'm like an old grandpa. I don't know what it is. It's our Discord. Don't forget. Me. There's an invite link. Look, it's a cool community where we hang out. We talk about video games. We talk about these polls. You mm-hmm. know, we just talk video games. We talk about gaming news. You know, it's just sometimes fun. we post memes. Sometimes these post memes. It's just a cool place to hang out. If you're looking for a place to just chill with some like-minded gamers who just mm-hmm. like talking games, check out the invite link. Join our Discord. We'd love to have you a part of it. Genuinely, we really would. Absolutely. All right. Now on to the big topic. So, yeah, Nintendo, cool. Switch ain't dead. Cool. Who cares, right? <laughs> Moving on. Uh, yeah, this is a, that was a small little topic. Yeah. yeah. Um, we barely talked about it. I don't know if you guys... Have you heard? You know, I'm sure they have, but Randy, have you heard about this game called... Wait, hold on. Elden Ring. Have you heard about this game called Elden Ring? I have. I've heard. And I've heard that there's a shiny new DLC that just came out for it. I also heard that. So I went and did a little research because I didn't hardly even know what the game was. It flew under the radar. I hadn't even hardly heard of it. Um, And apparently the DLC is uh, making waves for a variety of reasons. Yeah, I heard Um, it's a little little bit easy, right? No. I I heard that it... (laughs) I heard it was hard AF. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So it's supposed to be hard as shit. Uh, There's people who have like Elden Ring characters that are in like the 200s and they're getting like two shot by the first boss. So that's a thing. That's a thing. Um, And, you know, there was also kind of to coincide with this release of the DLC... um, we had an interview mm-hmm. in which the basically uh, Miyazaki, who is the like uh, I guess creator, of, he's the director, he's of the Elden director Ring of, and yeah. the president of FromSoft. Yeah, I mean he's like Mister FromSoft. Right? Yeah. Okay. Did this interview and part of that interview, of course, if you're interviewing Miyazaki, you got to say like, hey, let's talk about game difficulty because that's obviously a big part of the game mm-hmm. of of all FromSoft games, kind of, but it's definitely all the Souls likes. Yeah. Um, and in the interview, he basically said that. Changing the difficulty or making it easier would break the game itself, like break the concept of the game. Yeah, he said that, you know, the main point of these games is the feeling of accomplishment that you get from eventually overcoming this seemingly Mm -hmm. insurmountable obstacle. Right. And taking that away would would literally make the game not their, you know, not their intended vision. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, we put out a poll about this, about whether or not... 
people think that Souls Likes game should have selectable difficulty options. But first, I want to know what do you think about like what are your initial impressions on this? Like, where my, do you, I um. Do you want to go with what people have to say first and then do it? You want to do that way? A little bit. Okay, let's do it that way then. I think we will end up peeling back the layers of our okay. opinion as we go through. Okay, let's do it then. Okay, so you know, we asked the people, should Souls Likes have selectable difficulty options? Hit us with the results. 24% of people said yes, but most people at 76% said no. They just stay what they are. Yeah, so overwhelmingly people said no. Yeah, absolutely. I, I found that really interesting because... Um, I think there's a lot of people who would say yes, but oh, yeah, I also yeah. think the people who like these games really like these games and I yeah. bet you they voted. Yeah. Putting out this poll, I didn't exactly realize how much of a can of worms this question would be, but mm -hmm. read through the comments, um, on this poll and we will read some of them here, but I think we may have selected some of the more kind ones. Um, there are some not so kind comments. This was a whole, I didn't realize how heated people were about this. Yeah. So yeah, there were a lot of. Kind of mean spirited comments, <laughs> and I didn't pick those. Yeah. Um. But so let's start us out with a comment here from Olympus Mons. Yeah. Who said they have they already have a difficulty setting. It's just worded different. Lazy player who doesn't grind equals hard. Grind a little equals normal. Grind a lot because you aren't lazy equals easy. <laughs> yeah. And I thought this was funny because, okay, yeah, you grind, you overlevel your character, and everything else from that point on is easier. Yeah. But what about the grind itself? I, that, that was my thought. It's like, <laughs> first of all, grinding isn't easy. So, I mean, like you're talking about, I mean, it's kind of like, uh, it. you know, you, when you're in high school and middle school, you learn about the physics of, of machines and tools to help you do things. Mm -hmm. And what one thing they do is that they will spread out the difficulty over a long time so that it doesn't feel as hard to do. Mm -hmm. And that's really what the grind is. Instead of yeah. it being a very difficult all at once, it's just spread out over a very long time. I think it's still equally difficult. Yes. You know? But I have heard this approach a lot about yes. Elden Ring specifically, saying like the way you approach the game determines how hard it is. And I've heard people say not only with how much you grind, but with your build. Because apparently there's some builds in Elden Ring that are a little busted. That's what I heard. And back when I was playing Elden Ring, uh, and I didn't play that much into it, but I did look into like what's the best build to like make this game the easiest. Mm -hmm. um, and I did find that, yes, there are things you can do, but it's not like you can just like click a few buttons and you're good to go. Right. You, you still have to work for it. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. There's no, there's no easy way to get through these games, no matter what, e you know, grinding a lot is not easy and it's not going to be something that some people are going to want to do period. Right. Randy's never going to do that. Well, and, and that's okay. That's okay. Nobody said it wasn't okay. Um, and Whoa, and we'll, defensive much? Very, very defensive about this. <laughs> um, let's see here. Let's keep reading some comments. And yes. like you said, I think our opinions on this will trickle out. Bubster said, I'm bad at Souls games. Me too, Bubster. Their bleak beauty interests me, but I can't dedicate enough time to getting good at them. Would I like a difficulty setting? Yes. Do I think they should have difficulty settings? No. The point is that they are challenging games, and that's the way they should stay. If I want to experience it, I have to earn it. I think that's the point of Souls-like games. Yeah, so I thought this was very insightful because, you know, old Bubster was able to kind of mm -hmm. put their uh, maybe personal bias maybe out of this answer, and I I think that's where I kind of land, too. You know, yeah. would, sh would it be nice for a lot of people if there was a difficulty slider? Yes. Do I think they should put one? Not if they don't want to. Yeah, not if they don't want to. And and here's the thing. There are games out there that take a lot of inspiration from Souls-like games, and they have a difficulty selector. Mm -hmm. um, a good example would be the uh, the Jedi Star Wars Jedi, Jedi games. Mm -hmm. They have, Obviously, they're not Souls-likes. Yeah. The fact that they have a difficulty selector is one of the reasons that they're not Souls-likes. Mm -hmm. But they take a lot of inspiration from them. And, you know, like... It's okay. It's just a different type of game. And so I kind of also tend to agree with this. Like, would I like personally to be able to enjoy a Souls like and, and experience it? Yes. But the, the moment they put a difficulty selector on a Souls like, and then I play through it on easy because that's all I can do, mm -hmm. um, it's not the same experience. It's not a shared experience that you're having with everyone else. You can't, no. you know what I mean? Like, 
it's just it just isn't the same. So you, I would like to experience those games, but the only way to experience those games is to experience them the way they are intended to be played. Right. There, there are games where maybe you, you pump it on easy mode and you just play through it and you do it for the story. Yeah. I don't think these games would work well that way because the no. storytelling, at least in my experience with FromSoft, which is limited to like about 15 hours of Elden Ring, most of Sekiro and all of Armored Core, literally everything Armored Core has. Um, my Armored experience, Core 6. Armored Core 6, yeah. Their, um, their approach to storytelling is kind of hands off. You know, like it's there if you want to search for it, but it's not really hitting you in the face with like lore and no. background information and things like that. It's very obtuse, mm -hmm. the story. It, it's not like, <clears throat> like if you want to just experience what the game's like, but you don't want you know, to play it on easy, you know, it's like you might as well just go watch a playthrough. But at that point, I don't think really watching playthroughs is even going to get you what you want. I think the people who want to be able to experience these want to be able to experience them. Look, I would love to be able to enjoy these two and maybe one day I will, but mm -hmm. I don't, I, I personally don't think they should add the difficulty in the same way that you take something like a, uh, say like a platformer, say like tropical freeze. Mm -hmm. When you, you know, those games, fortunately you really can't put a, you, I guess you could make it slightly easier in some ways, but for the most part, you know, like some games just in their nature, they don't have a way to scale up or down the difficulty. They just are what they are. I think I think it's kind of funny that you brought up Tropical Freeze because they did add a, an easy mode. They did. And they did it in the same way that Elden Ring did, which is you can select Funky Kong and he has yeah. all the power ups from all the other Kongs. It makes the game way, 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 way easier. Kind of like an Elden Ring where if you do the right build. Maybe it makes the game easy. It's a similar approach to some vastly But they just give games. it to you without having, you don't have to grind for Facts. <laughs> Kong. That one is just buying the Switch version and clicking a button. Right. But you know what I mean? Like so many old platformers, they didn't have anything. No. You go back and you play, uh, you know, Super Mario World. Mm -hmm. That game is just the game it is. Yep. And you know what I mean? And, and the, it's the game they wanted. And it anyone who plays that game is getting the same experience. And we all have that shared experience together. Yes. Um, and if you're our crap at platformers, okay, you know, you may it may not be the game for you, but that's I think it's okay, one, for us to be like okay with the fact that some games just aren't for certain people. Like some people are gonna enjoy them and some people aren't. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think that's the problem. With the Souls likes, I think Souls likes are fine the way they are, and they are going to be great for some people. Mm -hmm. I think the real problem with Souls likes, and we'll probably get into this in a, some comments in a second, is that um, not everyone, but a lot of people who are not even a lot of people, a vocal minority of people who are really into Souls likes mm -hmm. tend to look down and crap on people who don't like them. Yeah, and I don't know why that is. Well, it's a superiority complex that comes from beating a really hard game and thinking that that makes you more valuable as a person. <laughs> yeah. That's what that is. Maybe that's what it um, is. I don't know. And we do have one comment that's going to touch on that at the end, but, um, that's what needs to change. Yeah. If we can just change our attitudes about it, if we can just be more accepting be like, look, they're not for everybody. And it's okay if, if you don't like it or you don't get enjoyment out of it the same way I do, we can just all adopt that mentality. Yeah. If we can all be like Randy, no, I'm not, I'm not even saying I'm that way. I'm just saying like I wish that the people – I wish that everyone who got into these were, were a little more accepting of the fact that not everyone is going to or wants to put in the grind. or, or Some people don't want to. Some people can't. And either way, it's cool. It's, yeah. You don't have to enjoy it's it. It's like when I beat Cuphead. Like, yeah. I didn't go on the internet and post a comment about how Randy is worse as a person because he couldn't beat Cuphead. Yeah, I gave up I on half I kept that shit on the inside. <laughs> you know? And that's what y'all need to learn. <laughs> Keep it inside. Yeah, you need to learn to bottle just a little bit. But, you know, I think, I really do think the overwhelming um, opinion that I have on this is that not every game is for everybody and that's okay. Yeah. I don't think that means we have to go change them. Mm -hmm. And I also wonder if FromSoft didn't have games like this that, had, that were built so different than other games, would they even have become what they did? You know, like, no, no. You're, you guys are maybe asking FromSoft to change, like, their like identity, you know, mm -hmm. and that that's not fair. I don't think it's kind of like the same. It, it's it's kind of like the argument works in reverse. It would kind of be like asking like for someone to take like a, a cozy farming sim and make. I just want it to be harder. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it it could change. It would change the whole thing. Like mm -hmm. you know, like it wouldn't be the same experience at that point. 
Yes, that's a good example. Yeah. Yeah. I just want my radishes to grow worse. I just want like every other one. I want to every time I, you know, farm a radish, it's rotten and I can't do anything with it. Yeah. And if I, um, you know, I want to make it so that ever so often demons come out of the radish plants and kill me <laughs> and then I lose all my shit. Exactly. And I have to start over. My I wake up one morning and my farm is just decimated. Decimated. <laughs> all progress lost. I can't reload saves. Mm-mm. It's just gone. <laughs> Can we add that, please, to Infinity Nikki? The upcoming open world dress up adventure announced by Xbox. That game needs to be harder. Yeah. I can already tell you, Infinity Nikki. It's just not accessible to me right now. I just need it to be a little harder, and then maybe I'd be able to enjoy it. All right. We got another comment here from Mari who said, I think there should be no setting. Not every game is for everyone, and some people enjoy the process of beating bosses after learning their moves. That's the whole genre. Mm-hmm. Learn the boss, mm-hmm. overcome the boss, feel good about yourself. That's it, the whole formula. And and the thing is, is like a lot of these games. Obviously, I'm I suck at these games. I suck at most video games. I love them, but I suck at them. Uh, but you know, like I was just playing um, Stellar Blade, and Stellar Blade also has some souls like inspiration. Mm-hmm. And um, towards the end, like the last boss was quite difficult for me. And but what I found is that the more you play it, the more you learn. And then what's really weird is once it clicks and mm-hmm. you really learn the boss, it really doesn't feel hard anymore. Yeah. It's like it, it's just it does but it takes it, but it takes beating your head against what seems like an unpenetrable wall for mm-hmm. quite some time. Then all of a sudden you don't realize you're gonna break through, but then you have that moment and you're like, like I in Stellar Blade, there is an option to revive yourself. Mm-hmm. Like uh, if you die, you can use this item that you can buy and it brings you back instantly so that you don't have to start all the way over. Right. Um, and I, one was running low on money, but I was buying those. And, uh, but the time I beat it, I didn't even need it. Mm-hmm. It was like, yeah. it was just all of a sudden was much easier. It was like that final time felt significantly easier because it just finally clicked. And it was like, okay, I know what to do now. Right. I practiced it enough. I'm good at it. I can do it. And I've I've had that experience a lot with bosses. Yeah. It, yeah. You know, Cuphead comes to mind. Sekiro comes to mind, which is very on brand for this topic. Um, the 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 Thunder Wind Sword guy, mm-hmm. the fight him in a tower. Uh, you know, shout out to anybody who might know who I'm talking about. I fought that guy for days, and then eventually it just clicked. I had a breakthrough, and it was like we were doing a dance. And I don't even think he hit me when I finally beat him. You know, it, it, and that's the way it works, isn't it? It's all yeah. of a sudden it makes sense. And it's literally like one of those gaming memories for me that I don't think I'll ever forget. And it just happens to be from some from soft. And it's because they couldn't because I couldn't make it easy. You know, would I have probably made it easy after like the second day? Maybe. Yeah, I might have done it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad I couldn't. Yeah. And, and like it, it's just look, it's part of the, that is the experience. And the mm-hmm. thing is, if you're one of the people who really wants to experience these, you're going to have to. You're going to have to put in the work and experience it. Yeah. Putting in an accessibility, like make it easier. It is a bit of a bummer and I get that, but there are other games that fill that void. Fortunately, Mm -hmm. there are plenty of games that have accessibility difficulty options that are, are very similar in a lot of ways. And like, so it's just a different type of experience. Yeah. So I have one more comment here Mm -hmm. that kind of, Kind of is addressing some of the vibes we got on this poll. Yes. Uh, hit us with old Lurkathon. Lurkathon says, you people trying to dunk on others who can't approach these games for their difficulty are just being all around jerks. What if someone really wants to play the game, but there's no way for them to have fun with it? Then should they play something else? Rude. What if they fully want to enjoy this game, but can't because it has no accessibility? The easy mode doesn't even have to be actually easy. Just a little bit uh, more accessible for those who want to play the game but can't do the main difficulty. You people look at your gatekeeping, having fun. You people are a problem. So I get it because the you read through, it, we didn't choose those comments, but no. there were a lot of very like negative, obviously people who feel very superior. They were looking for, they were looking for an argument. Yeah. So, yeah. They yeah. were trying to flame an argument out of people. And those people are a problem. Yeah. They are the problem. They really are. Yeah. But they're also, I mean, they're, they are a problem. I don't know that they're the problem here because they're not the ones calling for easy. They're not, you know, they're, but they are a problem for the genre, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I think it's probably, it's, it's two things. It's the people calling for easy are, they maybe don't 
understand that like that is the point of the game like right. that is the point like it's not a soul it isn't the same game anymore if you like like miyazaki said mm -hmm. if you change the difficulty it breaks the game it's yeah. not the same anymore yes and i agree with him but i also agree with lurkathon that that you know you shouldn't be a gatekeeping jerk no maybe you should try to explain like hey man you know that's the point of the game like Try it again. If you don't love it, maybe try something else. Like, I, and, and if you don't love it, it's okay. Like, it not is. everyone love. Not everyone loves farming sims. Right. You know, like, but obviously people do because they keep shoving them down their throats. Right. <laughs> um, you know, there are tons of genres of games that like it's gonna. Some are gonna click with some people, and some are gonna click with others. Mm -hmm. And like, just because one is, I think the fact that it's hard and it is like you have to really work at it to get to be able to do it mm -hmm. makes it kind of puts it on like on a pedestal in the people's minds who yeah. tend to want to put it on a pedestal. <laughs> you it know does, what I mean? but it's also unique, you know, because of that approach mm -hmm. and a little bit special, you know, because of that approach and the hype around it. So, you know, should people act that way? No, but should you feel really accomplished? Yes. Nothing so wrong like, with that. Yeah. But like you just shouldn't shut it down other people no. who don't want to do it. Right. Right. Yeah. You shouldn't be a jerk about it. <laughs> There's really no reason for that. Uh, you know, somebody else, Wishing the game was easier doesn't ruin it for you. It, no, it doesn't. It's like it's like enjoying roller coasters. Okay, some people love roller coasters, mm -hmm. and you know they don't understand why other mm. people don't like roller coasters. But you would be a jerk if you were like, "Look, you just are a baby. Mm -hmm. If you just ride the roller coaster, you might find out that it's actually the best thing in the entire world. And the fact that you don't makes you a lesser human. Right? Like it, it's just that's a jerk thing to do. Yeah. So, you know, in, in summation, yeah. the way I kind of feel about this is, you know, would be there being like some sort of accessibility difficulty option, if it was there, would it ruin the game for everybody else who didn't want to use it? No. Right. But if the devs don't want to put it there because it's not their vision for the game, then I don't think it should be there. Well, I yeah, and I also think that if even, even if you are a type of person who goes in and you say, well, heck, they added a difficulty mm. slider to Elden Ring. Now I'm just going to go put it on easy and play it. At that point, even if you do that, you can play the game, but you really haven't played the game. No. You know what I mean? Like you've played through the motions, but you didn't get to experience the game the, the way struggle. the actual game because the struggle is the game. You're right. But that being said, if you did that because it was an option, you would still not be a lesser human. No. And if you enjoyed it, no, then no. fair enough. God, no, you know, exactly. Fair play yeah. to you. But yeah. I do think there's some rude gatekeeping going mm -hmm. on, you know, in these games, but it's certainly a vocal minority. It can't be everybody. It's definitely not. I mean, I I have, well, I'm, we've known lots of people. There are people in our Discord uh, server who mm -hmm. enjoy these games. I have guitar students. I have a student who loves these things. And I can say that the people that I have experienced personally and talked about these games, I have never met anyone who mm -hmm. was like the comments. Yeah. Of course, people are way worse on comments. Yeah, because you won't meet that person in the real world because right. they won't act that way because no, they, they can't hide behind the anonymity of their keyboard. <laughs> right. That's a that's a pet peeve of mine. Keyboard warriors. Yes. Those people. Mm. You need to get your life together. <laughs> right. Ugh. Anyway, um, you got anything else about Elden Ring or? No, I'm excited that the DLC is out and people seem to be enjoying it. And it seems to be exactly what the doctor ordered for yeah. people who are wanting. That's awesome. Yep. Same here. I don't have plans to play it. Um, but, you know, who knows? Maybe one day I'll become a Souls-like convert and I'll go back and, re and experience it. I would be shocked. I would but, be shocked. Um, I don't expect it to happen. I'm just saying, yeah. you know, like, you know, crazier things have happened, I guess. No, they haven't. Okay. They really <laughs> haven't. But... <laughs> Anyway, guys, uh, it sounds like we're about to move on to our final segment, which is our Three for Dale Club. But before we do that, I just want to mention to you that you can become a member of uh, this channel on YouTube for a low, low, low fee of $5, I want to say. It's $5. Yeah. Um, and you get access to a bonus episode that we record every week right after we finish the main episode. Uh, today, the topic is, out of all these announcements, Summer Game Fest, Xbox, Nintendo, all this crap, what are we most excited about? You know, what got us the most pumped? If we're going to play it fast and loose and it's going to be a good time. So y'all come hang out. Yep. And thank you just so much, Danny, for all y'all who do support the podcast through memberships. And if you would like to support, thank you so much. Uh, but one thing we do is the Three for Dale Club. It's the last segment of our podcast. And what we do is if you leave us a comment on the YouTube version of this podcast, if you put in the phrase Three for Dale, 
kind of like our secret code phrase. We look for anyone who says that and we shout you out at the end of the next podcast. Thank you for watching and supporting the podcast. That's right. All right, starting at the Three for Dale Club this week is Josh Malloy, who said, It's an interesting decision, but hopefully it pays off for Xbox in the long term. Releasing titles across a wider audience is surely a good thing, We'll, uh, but we'll see. Three for Dale. And this is in reference to Xbox releasing games, you know, multi-plat. Yeah, Xbox is doing the new multi-plat thing. Not for everything, but they're, they're dabbling. Mm -hmm. they're, they're putting their toes in the water. Their and, toesies are getting a little moist, ain't they? I think they're about to go. I think, moist toesies. I think they're about to drop a full leg in there. My I, God. I think they're going to do it. Um, yeah, I will see how it turns out long term. I'm excited about Xbox. I think that they had a great showcase. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, you know, Phil Spencer told us we're getting a handheld. Uh, this is going to be cool. I'm excited. I'm excited. All right, next. Next, we got Kit, who said, hey, I got mentioned. Sweet. Yeah, we did talk about Kit last time. Of course we um, did. Kit said, Xbox is in a weird situation. I can't think of a particular reason to own one, but at the same time, it has to exist or Sony will have monopolized the console market. And at that point, there'd be no stopping them. Um, as far as good guy Valve goes, corporate simping isn't a good thing. I feel like too many people forget that the object of business is profit. The policy makes sense, but Steam having this much power isn't a good thing. Is there? Uh, it's there to make sure they stay on top. Yes. And then uh, also, anyway, I've yapped enough to make up for my many weeks. <laughs> I've been absent for three for Dell Club, but I'm now back. It That is great. Uh, yeah. So a couple things here from Kit. One about, uh, you know, Xbox. And whether or not they need to exist as a console. Uh, I, this is funny because I know that Kit has an Xbox. Kit is, and, and now a PlayStation. See, mm -hmm. that's the thing. Kit's now a little bit of a convert. Yeah. A little bit of a convert. Uh, and then, you know, last week we also talked about uh, Valve getting a uh, class action lawsuit in the UK mm -hmm. about uh, the allegedly controlling prices by saying that you cannot sell a game on a third party or I'm sorry, on a rival platform for a cheaper price than it is mm -hmm. on Steam. Yeah. Uh, we talked all about that last week. If you'd like to check out our conversation on that. All righty. Next up, we got Landon Stallings Dale himself, who said, Gaming Gig is now a Dragon Ball channel, and I'm here for it. Three for Dale. <laughs> Landon's like the biggest Dragon Ball fan that I that I know, and I love that. I'm pretty sure Landon has to be like exactly our age. I feel like <laughs> us and Landon yeah. grew up with like the exact same like influences on yeah. like what brought us into this whole world in terms of like what things we were interested in, what types of games we were playing. Mm -hmm. um, the difference is that Landon turned out to be like a nice, like pure person. Yeah. And we turned out like we did. Yeah. that's a big, big difference. And that's, you know, that's, there's a psychological discussion to be had there, but now is not the time. And then uh, we got next, we got bombs away who said, unless steam does something beyond stupid, like deleting games I own or no sales anymore, I would maybe switch to another storefront, but steam has a great UI ease of use and great games and sales. I do think uh, steam should lessen the cut they take by three to 5%. At most, since Steam is the best platform out there for your game to be on, mm -hmm. maybe maybe they should cut it to fifteen percent. Let's go. Let's go all the way. Just if you're gonna uh, make it so that you're the same as what we got uh, the Epic Game Store, they only take fifteen percent. Yeah, but they they aren't they don't give you the visibility that Steam does. No, they don't. They don't. So. It's a it's a definitely a trade off, I guess, isn't it? It is. Next up, we got Tom Derry, who said, I finally thought about what Xbox game I would want on PlayStation. Please give us the Ori series. And then posted a reply that said three for Dale, to which Coyote, a.k.a. Randy, a.k.a. Gampa, said, Tom, I think you're putting your three for Dale in a reply just to mess with Daniel. Want to take bets on whether or not he'll find it this week? Lol. I don't think he will. I don't think he will because he's stupid and I'm an asshole. <laughs> um, okay. I cannot believe that you did that, Randy. <laughs> Tom, uh, I'm sure you just forgot to say three for Dale and put it in reply. I'm sure it was very innocent. But um, you know what? I found it because fool me one. You know, there's an old saying that they have in, in Tennessee. I mean, I mean, we have it in Georgia. I'm sure it's in Tennessee. Fool me once. Shame on you. F f can't get fooled again. <laughs> Fool me once, but I won't get fooled again, man. Okay. <laughs> Final member of the Three for Dale Club this week is D Spence 18. No longer D18. This is the artist formerly known as D18. Mm -hmm. Old D Spence said, Three for Dale, I personally hope all Xbox games go to PS5. Buying a PS5 in the next few 
Oh, buying a PS5 in the next few weeks and will be able to sell my Series S if they keep doing this. Can't wait to spend the 37 bucks I'll get for it. How much do you think you'd get for if you traded in a Series S at GameStop right now? $39. You could tell you GameStop will tell you on their website how much you trade it in for. I don't know if we want to look it up, but they will they will tell you. What he meant by that was I don't know if Daniel wants to look it up because yeah, he has a, no intention of looking it up. I don't I have a I have a tablet here and we all know tablets are useless. Um no, tablets are pretty good. But GameStop will tell you how much their trade-ins are worth. Um, you can put in what you want to trade in, and they'll tell you what they'll give you for it. The other day, I had a student say, like, oh, I want to buy Xbox Series X. I think I'm going to trade in some of my old games uh, to get some credit to go towards the Series X. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was games like... games are nothing. And I was like, are you sure? He's like, yeah. I was like... You may want to look how much. So I was like, let's look up and see which one are you saying. He's like, I got GTA Five mm-hmm. for the Xbox 360. And I was like, okay. And we looked up and they would give you like 25 cents for it. And I was like, dude, you you don't need to get, no, just keep your GTA yeah. 5 for the Xbox 360. So um, it depends on if you're a pro member or not. Okay. If you're not a pro member, then you can get up to $175 store credit or up to $122.50 cash. For a Series S. For a Series S. And that's uh, if you're a pro member or not? That's not. If okay. you are, then you can get up to 137.75 cash and up to 192.50 store credit. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's better than I thought it would. Not 37 bucks. But you know, GameStop, they've done this before. Like, you know, you, when the OLED came out, you know, you traded in your regular Switch and got a really good deal. So No, I got the I got I got like I want to say 250 for my regular Switch. That's what I'm saying. And I think I had to pay 100 bucks for the Switch OLED. Oh, yeah. was the Switch OLED was 350, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I got 250 for regular Switch. That's that's pretty good. That's fantastic. So um, you know they, that's not unheard of for GameStop. So maybe go do that and get more than 37. dollars Heck, I'm uh, yeah. That doesn't seem like a bad idea. Mm-mm. Interesting. All right, guys. Well, that brings us to the end. Uh, until next time, I'm Randy, which makes me Daniel. This has been Gaming Gig. Three for Dale. Go Braves. Peace out.